in good old like pr police procedurals, the reason we watch them is because we want to unravel it. So we're behind. But in a thriller, you're ahead. And there's a few additional reasons to, as opposed to just sort of the, the deliciousness of the play along factor and the bomb under the table. But it helps us have an emotional weight and obligation to, f and we feel that tension. So, so there's a strategic thing that it does to us emotionally to be two steps ahead that helped determine this as a thriller. So one other trick that it also does is it opens up the world, which is the beginning of opening it up a lot in a second, which we'll talk about. But it starts to open up the world a little bit because we have even more insight into the antagonist. And that's always fun because these guys are sociopaths and crazy. So if we have maybe a little glimmer of what the bad guys are doing, like you were asking about Michael Clayton, we start somewhere around the midpoint to get some more taste of what the bad guys are up to. And that only makes us more anxious and more invested and more fearful for the lead character. But what happens in the midpoints of great thrillers, which we were, it was amazing to watch, is at the midpoint, the antagonist oversteps. It's almost like the hubris of the, psycho, of the, of the, of the sociopath oversteps. And now your uh, protagonist activates at the midpoint. In general, a lot of thrillers, a lot of them, suddenly switch and put you even even with the hero or two steps behind the hero, starting at that final downward spiral, end of act two, going into the climax. And it's kind of what we talked about yesterday, which is we actually don't need to see every little bit and piece that they're going to put into play for that big climax, especially in this case, because we just want them to vanquish that antagonist. And if we know all the things they're going to do, then when they actually do it, it's not so interesting. So. So this is when a little surprise twist happens. This is when, it, um, again, as I said yesterday quickly, like you know that the bank heist team in that kind of a thriller is going to get to the bank robbery. And you see them put all this stuff in a duffel bag, but you don't really know how they're going to use it. You see them put like random stuff. You know, they put some duct tape, and they put you know, a bottle of ketchup, and they put you know, a tennis shoe, and they put a walkie-talkie, and they zip it up, and they're like, ready to go? Go. And then they get to the bank. Now, in, in most thrillers, there's some sort of family unit at risk, whether it's truly a good domestic thriller and it's a real genuine family. But it could be, again, in this case, it's actually it's not the firm that he's trying to save. It's the people who are the victims that are in the class action lawsuit that he needs to do get justice for. It's your primal caveman belief to save your family. It's the most base and relatable thing propelling us. So the strongest thrillers tap right into that. I, I would argue the family is a metaphor for the best part of themselves. Thank you. Yes. I agree. The, the, the best part of themselves, the most human good part of themselves, is at risk now because the antagonist is going after it and wants to transform it into itself. We want, they want Michael Clayton to become dirty and corrupt just like them. And all of them at some point were Michael Clayton. And they took it. And now they're on the dark side. And he, you, that's an internal thing, though. So it has to be externalized into the film as something he must save. But really, what is it there for? It's there for the best part of himself. One of the other big things, the last one on this little list, is there's a major reversal that takes your breath away. Some books, if you read them on thrillers, call it you know, the hard left. Whatever the case is, um, in quieter courtroom movies, that's usually when the one person you thought you could trust, it turns out to be on, the, on their other team. There's a turncoat in, in, in your midst. That's sort of a take your breath away moment. But sometimes it's much bigger than that. Sometimes it's the moment when Matt Damon and the Born Identity is on the phone and they're yelling at him, and then they pull back, and they say, where are you? And he's like, I'm in your office. Right? Those are those moments. Those are those take your breath away, crafted moments that change the entire trajectory of the story, which again goes to my point earlier, which is you can't just have one goal and one drive that doesn't waver. Every time you up the ante, there's going to be a major reversal. But in this case, this one is so huge that, it, again, it takes your breath away. It really helps to put in a ticking clock, but there are thrillers that do not have them. 
uh, there's a different kind of urgency, but in general, it's a, it's a great trick, whether it's something simple like panic room, like she needs her insulin, or, you know, born identity, he knows as his, at, they know as he's getting his memory back, he's becoming more and more dangerous and more and more of a liability. So they're driven by the ticking clock, not him necessarily, right? They gave Jason Bourne his, a different ticking clock. So you can be very smart about how the ticking clock affects both sides. And who doesn't love a twist ending, right? We all love them, but you don't need them in thrillers. You absolutely do not. As long as there is an emotional, satisfying ending where all those random questions that were thrown out in Act 1 are answered, we're good. <coughs> but if you figure out a great way to have one last cherry on top of that Sunday, by all means, but it's not essential. What I mean is sometimes it's a brain over brawn exercise. <coughs> Michael Clayton doesn't have a ton of action action in it. We have a lot of activity and a lot of choices and a lot of goals and a lot of efforts. But no one's zipping around the streets of Prague the way they are with Jason Bourne. So action is not required for a good thriller. As long as you have a thinking chess game that is moving at a rapid pace, the energy is devoted to the ingenuity as opposed to the car engine.